what can I say? What we can't control is the weather. What we can control is how we go away from today out of our libertarian circles and in our own communities. And we share our knowledge and our ideas and our active listening to understand what our communities need. I think that is going to be as, as important as us gathering here today. Because when we go back to our communities, what have you, faith organizations, our neighborhoods, our companies, we can help others directly. I'm a big fan of Harry Brown, the direct alternative. How one individual can positively impact another individual. I'm a firm believer in that. It's not for everybody, but I know that I try to wake up every morning and think that way in my own community. And so when I developed Walk to Walk, the Walk, thank you Matt Kowalski for framing it, I explained it to him, and he says, you walk the walk, Joe. I said, I guess I do. I never thought about it that way, but I, I guess that's what I've been doing. So as someone that is involved in the community and on radio and leaders in my community, uh, on nonprofit boards, business associations, rotary clubs, I'm a proud libertarian. I don't hide from it. It's out there. Anybody can Google that. And I'm proud of that, but I, that comes with a degree of carrying myself accordingly. And so I have a lot of people coming up to me asking me, tell me a little bit more about libertarianism. All I can do is tell my own story. And so when I channel Harry Brown and say, my idea of libertarianism is how I can impact someone positively by my own actions, that's how I carry it out. I walk the walk. I've been involved with the Libertarian Party of Minnesota for about six years, directly. And I remember the first time I approached some of the ex executive committee and asked that I want to make this, I want to bring my own brand of leadership development, uh, contacting and, and engaging with the community. And I've got a, a, a road map for this. So I, I'm, that was six years ago already. When I talk about walk the walk, I'm not looking at the next election cycle. I'm looking up 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I've met many of you. Many of you that are just embarking on your careers. Some of you in second parts of your career. And I also believe that the elders in the libertarian community can teach us a lot. So always remember that the path they've taken can allow us to avoid some of the traps that we'll fall into. But also, the people in the second parts of their careers remember that the new generation coming up have a different idea, different thought. Let's listen to them. And that's critical for us in the libertarian movement, that we harness the cognitive diversity in this room. We have engineers, we have salespeople, we have accountants, we have economics majors, people in the trades, people that raise their children. As a group, when we can approach a problem and share each other's way of Doing it differently, respect that. I know I talked about cognitive diversity with one of our Minneapolis candidates from last year, and going about it that way allows us to walk the walk. Because libertarians, we don't have it all figured out, but we can learn from each other. We can move it out of our echo chamber into our communities by walking the walk. Four years ago, I met Chris Holbrook. I was deemed the presentation coach of the Libertarian Party of Minnesota. I know that Chris Holbrook stepped up in a, in a time when we had a couple candidates were ready to run statewide that just, for one reason or another, went somewhere else. <clears throat> the 
many of you remember that? I do, because behind the scenes I was there. Mr. Holbrook stepped up. And I started working with him, and I gave him one quote from Harry Brown. And uh, talks about you appeal to the self-interest of each prospect, and that's how you sell liberty, not by forcing it on them, but to listening and to sell to the, the, the prospect or the, the needs of each prospect. Well, on the Libertarian Candidate Handbook, turn to page 10. <coughs> that quote's on the top. And Chris, four years ago, when you stepped up when the party needed you, you were new to the Libertarian Party of Minnesota, correct? Correct. And here you are, state chair, ran as a governor, been to two national conventions, trained and, and recruited a lot of candidates. Are you a better leader today than you were four years ago? Absolutely. Are you a better communicator than you were four years ago? Debatable, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, yes. I believe that everybody has a chance to grow, and I saw that in Mr. Holbrook by working with him, standing up here four years ago in this very room, talking about framing issues and communicating. And I see that every day with him when, he, when we're out at Rondo together, speaking to diverse communities about what we stand for. So yes, your communication skills have improved greatly. I want that for everybody. When we walk the walk, we grow. Agreed? We get to meet new people. We learn from them. And when we learn, we grow. I've just entered my 50s. I can't wait to my 60s. Because 10 years ago, I was the president of the West 7 Business Association. And in the last 10 years of working with the LPMN and serving on various boards and being in faith organizations and working with a diverse group of people helping people directly, I'm a better leader today than I was. We don't always have to have the title of leader to be a leader. And so I encourage you, as we leave Maple Grove this weekend, to go back to our communities, seek out opportunities, positively impact someone's life. I know that Kara Schultz had the, the, the Black Friday Libertarian event which was directly impacting the homeless people by us going out the day after Thanksgiving and buying hats and gloves and, and mittens and so forth. That's an example of walk the walk. We don't have to have that title. We don't need saviors like Larry Sharp says. We need regional and local heroes. Agreed? Yep. When we each have local heroes and we see us doing different things in those communities, we can draw from that. And it makes us stronger. We lead by example. We walk the walk. One person I respected more in regards to uh, a vision was Herb Brooks, the U.S. Olympic hockey coach. It wasn't about how many national championships the University of Minnesota was going to win. He had a vision for Minnesota hockey and how he was going to get everybody involved and how Bemidji State, Minnesota, <coughs> University of Minnesota, Duluth, St. Thomas's all could draw the best of Minnesota hockey and everybody got that opportunity. So with that vision, I see that 10, 20, 25 years down the road, our children, our people in our, our faith organizations, our neighbors, our co-workers, we begin to develop them and allow them to walk the walk and become regional and local heroes. Don't we become more accomplished professionals when we have that leadership skill? The numbers are staggering on how much money corporations spend on leadership development. <coughs> And I, for one, have been in situations where they weren't going to spend any money on my leadership development. And the good libertarian thing to do, guess what? I'm going to go find my own leadership development. And I did. 
that is a critical point in your life when you, you can harness. You're not going to wait for your company to send you to a conference. You step up and you walk the walk. Now, that being said, I am the father of 16-year-old triplets. <laughs> Ten years ago, I couldn't get very far out of my neighborhood. Okay? I had an elderly father that I had to be around. I'm mindful of everybody's point in their life. Okay? Be open to it. Hopefully I've planted a seed. I hope that five years from now someone comes up to me and says, Joe, what you said in 2018 resonated with me, and this is what I'm doing in my own community. That's my goal. And my goal is that we're going to have to find a new location because this room won't fit all of us. That's my goal. That we have so many people impressed by what we bring in our leadership development and we, and we engage with our community. And for candidates, the ability to learn what your community needs by being involved in small groups, civic organizations, nonprofits, only gives you that edge when you're running against someone that's not engaged in their community. Now, I've got a long-term plan. My triplets will soon be self-sufficient. That's my goal. But I can tell you that when I decide to run, what I'm doing in Anoka County now will allow me to display my walk the walk and to be a viable candidate and someone that was involved in getting things done. Now, that being said, I've only got just a couple minutes, right? Joe, you've just become our final keynote speaker, so you can have all the time you have. <laughs> <laughs> we get out of here by midnight, though? Yeah. Right. That'd be great. That being said, I, I developed a model that I've been working on. A lot of you know that I've shared the stage with the, the talented Tyler Swinger, and he has pulled back because he's got a young family to raise. This talk, Walk the Walk, is uniquely me. And I've been developing this model for candidates, for people that want to be community leaders, for professionals wanting professional leadership growth. And so I've been talking with a lot of people. I've been uh, in confidence just running this model by them. I will unveil this model at two upcoming events. And one of them, I'm, I'm honored and proud to represent the Libertarian Party of Minnesota in New Orleans in late June at the National Convention where I will talk about Walk to Walk because my vision is not just for Minnesota, it's for the entire country. And if I can speak to a candidate in Colorado or a stay-at-home parent in Florida that wants to do more and I give them that model to start reflecting, realizing how much time and commitment they can, they can give, and finding an organization or a cause that lines up with their values and drives their passion, and a home for their transferable skills. Everybody in this room has a transferable skill. Don't ever forget that. Everyone in this room has transferable skills, and you brought them here today. You will bring them to issues in your community. Don't let anybody ever say that you don't have transferable skills. And if they all they look for is a title on your business card, <coughs> show them. That's what you do. You show them. Don't wait for them to tell you that you're ready. Show them. Be mindful. <coughs> Listen to others. Learn from others. Be authentic. And the more authentic and genuine, genuine you are, you build trust with people. And when you build trust with people, you have the ability to work with them. Chris Holbrook had to trust me that I was going to support him in his efforts. But it took sitting at O'Gara's, <laughs> talking about how we're going to frame some issues, right, Chris? Which time? 
<laughs> yes, there was a couple of Guinnesses involved. But I pointed over in 2014 when Chris was getting ready for running for governor, one of my favorite authors, Vince Flynn, used to bartend at O'Gara's. That's a true story. Most of his characters in his books are based upon the characters that the State Paul Police and the, the, the bartenders and the co-workers there. Vince Flynn was a bartender at, at O'Gara's when a hundred publishers turned him down. He had dyslexia. He, could, he had a physical disability. He couldn't make it. He wanted to be a military fighter pilot. I told Chris, I said, nothing's impossible. And I meant that, Chris, because here you are four years later. And I never said that we were going to win in six months. What if, we make, what if we win in the next 15, 20 years? And we prove them wrong. We show them that if we walk the walk and we grow every day. I know I've worked with a number of candidates here. And I've been honored to do that. And I never think that... I have the greatest idea that I'm going to put into them. I want to draw out their best skills. They already have it in them. And that's how I approach it. Every candidate that I've worked with, I draw it out of them. We had great candidates last year, the year before. They all brought transferable skills. They all were leaders in their community. But it, it takes a lot to step up. It takes a lot to step up as a community leader. And my goal in the next couple of years is that Manny Kowalski over here has to find a new place for us to uh, meet for the Libertarian State Convention of Minnesota. For that, I thank you.